Hey guys, it's Alex coming at you from the garage and I wanted to document a little bit of the um, assembly process, putting the motor together before I go ahead and stick it in the GT500. So I'm going to show you what I have to do before I get it in there. I'm going to dress it up a little bit and uh, then do a, get a game plan going in order to get this thing in the car by myself. So got the engine hoist with the motor slightly uh, up in the air so, to make it a little more comfortable. So when I shipped the motor off to Keith Ray, it was just the bare long block with the covers. He was nice enough to get me new powder coated covers. He gave me the old ones back. So shout out to him for doing that. Also, what I had to do is start assembling everything based off of memory. And I remember one of the first things that I took off was this oil cooler slash alternator bracket. This um, line that goes from the back of the intercooler to the front of the intercooler. Now this had to go on first so that this little bracket can be utilized to hold down the hose. So the next step for me is to figure out make sure all the bolts are in the proper location. This is for the oil filter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dress up the uh, driver, sorry, yeah, driver's side header first. I did, uh, I did source, or actually I was able, or am able to reuse these. I'm a big fan of the stock stuff. Nothing against the graphite stuff. It's just, I don't know, this, if these are good, you can reuse them a couple of times and it shouldn't be an issue. And when you put them up against the port of the American Racing header, it's actually pretty much on the money. So I'm gonna reuse them and go ahead and dress up the driver's side first. Yes, I did reference my old video, so don't make fun of me. Alrighty, got the headers in. Um, I, I mean, simple process, same, um, bolt stuff up. The problem is you kind of have to squeeze it in here, so I found that out after I had the headers in. So I'll finish cinching that up, finish, finish cinching all the bolts up, but all the headers are in. Looking like somewhat of a motor now. I'm going to do the motor mounts, intercooler, front pulleys, and geez, I think it might be ready to throw in. Unless I want to wait and put the flywheel and clutch assembly completely together, and that's probably what I'll do. That's the smart way to do it. Okay, got the pulleys on. Again, I already got the headers in. Oh, geez, there we go. Got the pulleys on. Took a little bit, took my time referenced my old video that was the best thing I could have done to get the orientation of the pulleys uh, but once I started putting them on it was kind of like self-explanatory so I'm gonna try to tuck it away over there in a the corner so the Corvette fits get back after it maybe tomorrow maybe Monday got the flywheel and separator plate all bolted in now I'm gonna go ahead and tuck them down and put the spec clutch that Bondo Bird got me just trying to take video as I go along Okay, clutch is installed. Now the bell housing, and then after that, I, I think it's ready to go in the car. I'll test fit the transmission after the bell housing is installed. Make sure everything goes in smoothly because when I'm under the car, I wanna make sure I don't have that many issues. So let's get this guy on. Okay, bell housing in. Got all the extra bolts. Got a bunch of extra bolts in that sucker. Use the top two as lifting points. If I need to hinge, hopefully it'll slide on this guy. If I need to angle this guy way down. So uh, let's attempt uh, a motor stab at this thing. Okay, I'm gonna test fit the T56 without the, uh, basically, hydraulic slave. And uh, just to see if it fits in the spline and pilot so that when I do, um, do it under the car, I'm not struggling to line it up. So I'll do it here without a slave. Hopefully it goes slide right in, it slides right in, take it right back out. And try to get the engine in the car. Just 
on the dowels. Looks like it's on the dowels. It fit right into the pilot. So take it out, hopefully. Hopefully that didn't damage anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was our name. So I'm gonna stab the motor. Okay, so plan is to stab the motor in here, at least get one bolt on. I, of course, because I took it apart forever ago, I can't find the second bolt. I'll just uh, get them lined up and then go to parts, a hardware store, and get uh, two new bolts. I'm not a big fan of the super fine threads on these, so. But got the bushings pre, I don't know, installed, cleaned as much as I could down there. I'm going to leave that harness laying there because that's the O2 stuff. Fuel lines out of the way. This is part of the injector harness, so I'm thinking this has to kind of go over everything. So I'm gonna leave it there and snake it through the front. So videoing it is gonna be tough. I'm not gonna lie. I'm by myself, so I'll do my best. Okay, transmission time. It's gonna be uh, a push-up fest. Luckily, I didn't gym today, so this uh, is gonna be interesting. So again, snake it in there, get underneath. Luckily, it has dowels, so location will be okay as long as I get a bolt or two in. Got this guy located in the right spot. So let's get it in there, and I think that'll be it for today because I've done a lot. I've actually uh, got the intercooler on wired in the uh, uh, coils, got the alternator, ground, starter, all in. Let's get the trans in there, and then next time I'll work on the supercharger, rails, fuel system, and cooling system. Okay, that sucked. But, got it done. Had to bench, bench press it in. Luckily, the T, uh, the T56 has dowels. Don't mind the glass cleaner. I literally have a mess. But, was able to get it up in there. It sucked. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the cross member. Bolt up the trans. And brother, we're gonna call it done, because, uh, I'm wiped out for the day. So um, that'll be it for now, and then I'll come back tomorrow, and it'll look like two seconds for you. It'll be about eight hours for me. 
So pretty much all back together up here. The biggest pain in the butt I think I had was putting all these hoses together. If you know anything about the GT500 hoses, it's a very convoluted setup to get these guys installed. It's just brackets, this hose is still kinked. Still haven't had this guy fully secured because I wanna get in there and tweak some more stuff. Um, installed the fuel system, installed all of the hoses. This is gonna have to get rerouted, but don't worry about that. But most of it is in, now I have to work underneath and let's, let's get under there and show you what's happening, give you an update as to what's happening now that I am converting this car back to a manual. So, sorry about the bad, um, you know, lighting, but alternator, all that stuff. See, this is this is what I got to deal with. Sorry, this is what I got to deal with just with, with room. There's not that much room under these cars, but let's concentrate on the business end, which is the T56 Magnum XL. If you know anything about the T56 Magnum XL, it's one, heavy, very heavy, two, the bell housing is super robust. If you've never seen a XL bell housing with an SFI rating, it's a whole thing to get this sucker in there. Um, I did get the ARH two inch primaries in there. The only issue I think I came across with the two inch primaries eventually is gonna be this guy right here. The steering shaft, and uh, once I figure out how to get it on there, I'm gonna need some help to someone steer up there. It might touch one of the primaries up there, but I won't really know until I get it in there. I might have to tweak things around to get this in there. Okay, so I'll have to make sure everything's loose, make sure the steering wheel is straight, and get this guy on there, and then figure out the whole situation there. But I wanna make sure it doesn't hit one of the primaries up here because it's on the close side to this guy up there. So that's something you're gonna have to look out for for two inch primaries on a uh, GT500. They're just bigger, big tubes, and uh, not much room. So apologies for the camera angle, but um, everything else went pretty good for being able to do it by myself. Everything went pretty straightforward. So the drive shaft I have to order, and what I had to do beforehand is get a slip yoke. So this is a strange slip yoke. 31 spline. So the 31 spline has a part number on it. Zero, one, I uh, just dropped the, what did just drop? Oh, okay, that was the uh, steering shaft. Zero, one, six, six, nine. Zero, one, six, six, nine is a 31 spline for T56. So that was uh, made this year. Nice, at least it was made this year. So um, there's a strap style, meaning like bolted on or a severe extreme duty version of this and this is the most severe duty i think it's 183 bucks and 31 spline here so what i'm gonna have to do is figure out how much stick out this thing has or needs in order for me to measure from the center here to let's get back here whoa tight on space tight on space tight on space to the center of this guy, okay, and figure out how much room, um, you know, center to center. I think I have the straps in here somewhere. I gotta find them, but I'm pretty sure the straps are somewhere here. I just haven't really looked because it's a mess down here. So yeah, it's an absolute mess down here. So don't look at the mess. But that's the update. Still gonna run the exhaust, still gonna run everything else. Um, I have to source a shifter, so I'll be calling um, tick performance for a shifter so I can seal that up um, I still have oil to get and I have to figure out what bolts I need for the uh, what gonna call it <laughs> the, the cross member this is just there for now but this is the right thread pitch it's just the uh, the length is no good so I just shimmed it up with washers for now until I find the right bolt, thread, and pitch. It's not half 20, it's like M10 1.5 or something like that, or M12 1.5, so I have to figure that out. So, just wanted to give the members an update of what's happening. Uh, T56 is in. Uh, the clutch is the spec clutch that Bondobird gave me, um, because there needs to be a sacrificial lamb, and the clutch is gonna be that clutch is going to be the sacrifice. As you can see, I have pretty good access to everything in here, to the 
to the hoses to, to the connections everything is pretty darn straightforward so I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy finished up today I'm gonna try to measure the drive shaft uh, get the uh, steering shaft installed permanently and clean up anything in the engine bay and throw some oil in it it needs BR40 to start and then he wants me to run FR50 so that the car can uh, it actually I don't know have plenty of lubricity on startup Jake said he had some BR50 I'm sorry 40 but this is BR30 so I won't be able to use this and if I'm not mistaken I think he has the proper bolts that I need for the T56 cross member let me see if these guys fit okay, gonna see if these bolts that Jake provided fit if they fit I'm a happy guy Oops. Fuck yeah, brother. Love it. Eh, it's a little on the tight side, but it, oh yeah, there we go. It's got like a locking kind of um, tab on the other side. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, anyway, bolts will fit. Thank God I'll take these dumb washers off. And that be Okay, looks like I got everything to clear nicely. Um, nothing's rubbing. Well, that one's rubbing. I mean, what are you gonna do? But the fact that I'm able to turn it without um, really severely having major issues and you know freely by hand I, I'm just literally pulling and pushing on this guy I'll show you all right just pull and then here so it's not making a metallic noise or anything so I was able to get that squeezed in there so good that's done uh, I also got the bolts in for the cross member there you go they're all in so very nice very nice I measured the drive shaft from center to center, so it looks to be about 40 and a half, meaning U-joint to U-joint center. So, yeah, that's it. That'll be the update. I have to find the, the U-bolt or the straps for that because I have no idea where they are. So I'm going to look all over the garage for those to make sure I didn't lose them. Thanks for uh, being G's like that and uh, paying a brother some monthly nut to get shit like this done. Appreciate it very much. All right, that's it for the update.